Hello, viewers. Welcome to today's edition of Personal and Family Security and Safety Program on the African Town Hall Online Television. Personal and Family Security and Safety Program is brought to you by Secure Travel and Residence Services Limited. We are now in the dry seasons in Africa, and in a few weeks' time, the Hamatan will pass away, and the rainy season will be here with us as we enter the month of March. This period is usually characterized by fire incidents uh, this season, also witnessed a lot of bush burning and forest fires that had led to destruction of farmlands and homes and lives and other property. Tanker and cooking gas, both um, domestic and fuel gas, have been explosions have been rampant recently, leading to deaths and injuries in homes, on our roads, and at gas plants. The rainy season will soon be upon us in West Africa. It has been on in the eastern parts of Africa for some time now. Flooding and erosion are endemic problems in Nigeria and many West African countries, largely because of poor road network or roads and communities without erosion and flooding control measures. Every year, flooding leads to multiple deaths and the destruction of property and valuable assets and agricultural produce. The challenge of the coronavirus pandemic is still with us. Apart from the initial waves, which led to lockdown of the world early this year, early this year and last year, um, a new wave of infections are reported all over the world today, including Nigeria, with hundreds of thousands of infections and hundreds of deaths already recorded. There's fear that there will be another lockdown in places like Nigeria. It is being contemplated. There are lockdowns in some parts of Europe and America. This new wave is already doing havoc in America and Europe as we speak. The safety problems in the world generally, and Nigeria in particular, is not likely to get better. And so is the security problems they are likely not to get better in the near future. What can we do? What can someone do to keep himself, family, and assets safe and secure during this perilous time that we have in our hands? We at the Afghan Town Hall Online Television feel that the only way is to get smarter through constant safety awareness and security awareness education for individuals and continuous training for safety and security professionals. To promote this needed safety awareness education to help our viewers, the African Town Hall Online Television created the Personal and Family Security and Safety Program through which we invite security experts and safety expert professionals to come to our online studios regularly on Saturdays at 11 a.m. to share with our viewers tips and strategies to help them and their loved ones to stay safe and secure, and also to secure their assets. Today, we are pleased to have a renowned safety expert professional and also a security professional in the person of Mr. Richard Okoria, who is amply qualified and certified in both security and safety measures and systems and licensed by world-renowned bodies for safety and security operations. We will be having him share his experiences, his training to help you have tips and strategies to keep your family and yourselves and your corporate organizations and even government departments safe and secure and help mitigate the ever-increasing threat of 
in, uh, safety problems in our environment today. Mr. Okoria is a certified safety and fiscal security manager, a certified investigator, a safety security instructor, and a realtor with over 17 years' experience in safety and security. He graduated from the Kwara State Polytechnic and the University of Lagos in electrical electronics engineering and strategic security and infrastructure protection. He is widely certified and licensed in safety, security, and loss prevention industries, including certified executive protection officer, certified fiscal security manager, occupational safety and health supervisor, certified counterterrorism specialist, certified executive protection officer, and peace building mediation and reconciliation certifications. Mr. Okoria is currently a laws and prevention supervisor with four points by Sheraton Victoria Land Lagos. Mr. Corey, welcome to our studios. Uh, uh, Mr. Francis, thank you for having me. You're thank welcome. You. Welcome. Thank you. Well, viewers, we invite you to participate in this discussion by leaving your comments and asking questions on the chat bar, which Mr. Okoria would help us to answer at some point in this interview. We truly value your comments and questions. If this is your first time of uh, being with us, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The African Town Hall, and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so that the next time we post similar videos or those that you like, you receive a notification that will help you benefit from them. Today, we are considering how to stay safe in the face of increasing wave of safety and security challenges, especially with gas explosions, domestic and industrial, fire safety and other hazards, flooding and other sundry safety and security issues in Nigeria today. Okay, Mr. Kuri. I'm here with you, sir. Thank you. As someone who is very close to the industry, both safety and security industry, and who is following events, what are the major safety and security problems that individuals and families and even corporate organizations should be careful about during the remaining part of today, this dry season? All right. Um, thank you once again, Mr. Francis. Um, a lot has been said about um, safety and security by my professionals in the industry. A lot, a lot, a lot have been said. Unfortunately, whatever thing has been said has not usually been followed. Um, however, we will keep talking, we will keep educating. Um, first and foremost, I would like us to understand the meaning of safety and also understand the meaning of security. Now, in this part of the world, in Nigeria, we tend to see both safety and security as one. Sometimes we even throw away one and leave the other. And the truth is, both of them go hand in glove, pari passo. You can't do with one and leave the other. Now, um, for the benefit of our viewers and listeners, I want to do a quick recap on um, safety and security. So I will start by defining or telling us in the possible understandable way what safety means and what security means. Now, safety, when we talk of safety, we are simply talking of protection all the measures that we put in place to help protect an individual, properties, information, what have you, you know, from harm and other sources or kinds of undesirable uh, activities, you know, outcomes caused by the non-intentional activities of man. Please mark my word, in safety, it is the non 
intentional activities of man that we are protecting ourselves and properties against. Non-intentional activities of man. Because I'm trying to differentiate between safety and security. Now, for security, security is also protection that we put in place using all measures, mechanic, mechanisms that we have available to us, you know, to protect ourselves and whatever we want to protect, you know, from the intentions, intentions of human behaviors and other or human factors, intentions. So safety deals with the unintentional activities that are caused by man, which is harmful to man. Why security deals with the intentional activities caused by man against man. Are you with me, Mr. Francis? Yes. So now, what are the things that we need to do to stay safe? We understand in this pandemic era, we cannot do, we cannot talk about issues of safety and security without mentioning the COVID-19 pandemic. We understand the adverse, the negative effect that has caused the whole world. And coming down to Nigeria, we understand how difficult it has worsened the economy situation of the country, how it has made a lot of companies sack people, how a lot of able-bodied men and women have lost jobs, roaming about the streets, finding it difficult to feed their loved ones and even themselves, finding it difficult to take care of basic, basic, basic commitments. So the, the, the pandemic is one major cause of the problem we're facing at the moment. It has worsened it. So are you with me? Yes. So now, the only way or the one of the ways we can stay safe and secure ourselves, our loved ones, our property, one, we need to look at the issue of complying with every COVID-19, you know, all the policies, all the procedures that we have been told by the World Health Organization and by the Nigerian government. You know, things like social distancing, physical distancing, hand washing regularly, wear your nose marks, all of this. We need to keep, we need to adhere to these things. Because it is the person that has life, a healthy life, that will think of working or making money. So first is the issue of safety. We need to be safe keep ourselves secured, follow all the procedures of the COVID-19, which we have been told, we have been trained, and even the TVs and the radios keep announcing it almost on a daily basis. Even the networks, networks that we use, when you dial a number, they will tell you some of these things. We need to adhere to them. COVID-19 is very real. Now, looking at COVID-19, because of the adverse effect it has done to the economy, it has added more to criminality in the society. So it is important that the gentleman on the road, the gentlewoman knows these things. It is important we begin to know the trends of activities happening in the society. For example, if you're living in an environment, you need to know the crime history of that environment. It is important. The crime history of environment A might be different from the crime history of environment B. So if your own environment has a history of criminality at given times, especially if you're waking up in the morning to go to work or you need to go to somewhere, and you're waking up at five and you know that you'll be attacked, it is a history. People have told you several, or you know about incidences of people being attacked as early as five, six in the morning, it is a history. So when you have no other options to move around than to go out at those particular times, it is important you are extremely careful. Now, another thing is, for us to be safe in this period, you need to know your environment. Know the people around your environment. And the moment there is any suspicion, it is important. You contact the nearest police station and give them this information because it is with information security professionals, safety professionals work and operate. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Uh, that is very important. And, and I like what you said. The, the, we have been talking about these things a long time. It, we in the media world know that you have to talk and then and talk and talk again before uh, one person will take what you have said and they use it for their benefit. So that's why we continue to look for all the experts like you to come here and help with this matter. Uh, we won't be tired, like you said, of talking because that is the only way the people can really be safe. Okay, thank you. Um, prevention, they say, is better than cure. Um, what are the loss prevention based practices set up as standards in the industry that individuals, families, and corporate organizations should aim at? Okay, thank you. Um, loss prevention based standards. Um, it's they are not perfect, you know. It's uh, it's not rocket science. You see, in those days of our forefathers, they were only looking out for three three things in their life: their families. And when I mention family, I talk about their wives, their children. If they have slaves, if they have if they have people who are depending on them, that's one. Then number two, they are either farmers. Number three, or they are um, hunters. Now, in all of these businesses, they involved themselves in. They lived in our world. They had always find, found a way around to protect themselves. But be that as it may, we understand that the world has evolved. And as a matter of fact, crime has also evolved. The trends of criminality have always improved from time to time. And that is why we security professionals must also follow those trends so that we will not be left behind. Now, the best practices that I will advise or in the industry, which I am going to talk about in brief for families, individuals, or even corporate organizations is one. Uh, we need to be seriously aware of who we are, the things that we have that can actually bring us to the limelight to become a target or a prey. What I'm trying to say here is this. Whether you are an individual, a family, or a corporate organization, there is something you have that somebody want to take from you in terms of loss prevention. So it is very, very important and expedient that you as a person or as a corporate organization do what we call threat or risk analysis or assessment. Now, you ask yourself, what do I have that people can take? Is it my money? Is it my car? Is it my intellectual property? Is it my wife? Is it my kids? Whatever it is. The moment you identify those things, the areas you think that people can actually attack you, where criminality can occur, you begin to look for preventive measures. So basically, analyze, identify the threats, the risk. Then you begin to profile countermeasures. Countermeasures in the sense that you begin to harden those targets. Make yourself, make those properties you have, those things you want to protect, those things you do not want to be lost, make them difficult for a criminal, you know, to assess. It is simple. And this very basic, uh, simple methodology cuts across even the the, the, the organizations, the big organizations. Now, we also look at what I call the criminality that comes from outside. It's an external criminality. We also need to look at the internal criminality, the internal individual or the threat, internal threat within families, within organizations. Because most times we tend to focus all our energies in preventing the external threat from getting access into our lives. And we forget about the internal 
the internal threat does not necessarily mean the spiritual kind of. No, you have people within you, within your compound, within your, your family, within your organizations that can actually harm you, hurt you. So as much as you're looking out for ways to prevent the external from you know, getting access to your property, it is important. You also watch out for the internal because they are always within. Thank you. Thank you very much. Viewers, you are watching Personal and Family Security and Safety Program on the Afghan Town Hall online television with Mr. Richard Okorie, a highly qualified and certified safety and security expert professional. Um, Mr. Okorie is a loss prevention office, uh, supervisor with the Four Points by Sheraton Victoria Land Lagos. Personal and Family Security and Safety Program is brought to you by Secure Travel and Residence Services Limited, your number one travel and residential security consulting company. You can join this discussion by leaving a comment or asking questions, which Mr. Okoria will help us respond to in due course. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, do, do you have recommendations for the federal, state, and local governments on how to improve fire safety awareness among the citizenry? Uh, of course. Of course, um, yes, we, we do. Um, every safety and security professional or even security safety bodies have always spoken about preventive measures, have always been advising the federal government, the state, the local government. Um, like we said earlier, one thing is to keep talking. One thing is for whatever has been spoken about to be implemented and followed, monitored judiciously, you know, to arrive at a logical and positive conclusion. Now, like you made mention earlier, you said that uh, we keep talking until one person begins to pick up and actually begin to use. Now, um, there are no two ways about it. The only way we can, the federal government, the state, or the local government can, you know, improve fire safety is uh, through continuous awareness. You know, now from the federal level, there must be a bill passed to the states to enforce. Now the state passes the same bill to the local government because it is the local government really that reaches out to the masses. Now, take, for instance, in Lagos, the number of local government we have here, it is the duty of the local governments to, you know, sensitize, bring up weekly training awareness programs. It could be in classes by batches. It could be on radios. It could be on televisions, you know, um, sensitizing people on preventive measures on how to prevent fire, and of course, what to do when there is fire. You know, these basic trainings, continuous trainings, it is not a training that will come once and just disappears afterwards. No, it should be a continuous training and awareness. Now, this training and awareness should also be taken to the marketplaces. Marketplaces, the big markets, the small markets, the big shopping organizations, the shopping malls, individuals that are able to establish shopping complexes big enough should be enforced, should be directed, of course, to conduct maybe twice a week or once a week fire safety awareness training for all of their occupants on a daily basis. Because now, a lot of things happen when people are not aware of what to do. A lot of things happen when people are ignorant. Now, the issue of negligence is another thing we need to talk about later. Now, people need to be trained so that that ignorance can be taken away from them. People need to be trained so that they will know what to do. And at the time they fail to do it, they won't have anybody to blame for themselves. Talking about the marketplaces in recent times, we have noticed, we have observed a lot of times when there are fire outbreaks in the market, millions of properties, money, are lost to the inferno. 
sometimes lives are lost too. And most times, these things happen in the night when practically nobody or very few people are in the market. And from investigations, we have been able to realize that most of the fire outbreaks in big markets are caused by electrical faults. Now, what causes electrical fault is one, when you have a malfunctioning electrical device in your office or in your shop or in your marketplace. Two, when you are overloading a certain electrical device, yes, it can cause fire. Three, when you are using the services of unqualified individuals to do your electrical work for you in the office. The unfortunate thing is that fires most times will not, you know, will not begin to it will occur when people are there to stop it. It will come when people are not even around. You will only begin to see the smoke and the fire, and by then it probably might be too late. All right? Then another thing again is the fire service that we have in this country. I am very sorry to say, uh, in more ways than one, they have really not been up and doing. Um, I do not know if uh, they do not have uh, the equipment needed to do their job. But one thing that I want to say here is this. The fire service of we, that we have in the country are supposed to be properly trained individuals. Fire service individuals who will know how to navigate traffic, who will know how to respond to calls promptly not even wasting a second. They know how to respond. They should be on a lot, be very ready. Because I've had a story where the fire service um, station was called and uh, uh, before the call came, everybody was relaxing somewhere, not even wearing their uniform. They were not at least putting their shoes. It was when they were called that they started jumping up and down, wearing shoes, putting on laces and all of that. This is unprofessional. It delays time of response. So these areas, if we are able, or the government is able to take care of this aspect, I think uh, it will give a plus, you know, to, to increasing fire safety and possible fire prevention. And that way, uh, lives, loss of life and properties will be minimal. Thank you. Okay, great. And um... You, you hinted something there. I would like to add a, ask a follow-up question from that point. Uh, is there anything that individuals themselves can do in the event of fire? This, this is the fire is now on. It has been noticed and people are around there. Are there certain things that individuals can do for their safety and to maybe be able to save a few property? Yes. Um, a few things that uh, can be done by individuals. One, before you begin to save a few property, you need to realize, is it safe for me to try to fight this fire? Um, basically, during fire training, you are trained, you are taught. We are trained and taught that in the event that the fire is beyond you, you can't fight it. It has gone beyond a certain level. Please do not attempt to fight it so that your life or that individual's life will not be added to the property that is already born in the inferno. So in an individual can only fight a fire that is burning when it is still at the very basic, at the very small level, where they can actually use uh, maybe fire extinguishers to quench, or they use fire, or they use water. Water, depending on the kind of fire, because there are some fires where you put water, the, the flames will increase. You understand, example, petrol, if you put fire, if, if petrol is burning, you're pouring ordinary water, it will increase. Kerosene, if it is burning, you put only water, it will increase. So in situations like that, you there's what we'll call uh, the, the foamy kind of fire extinguisher. Even if you don't have it, it is something you can fetch water, pour detergent inside the water, enough detergent to pour it onto those fires. That is, on the condition that the fire is still very small for you to fight. But when it has gone beyond a certain level where you can no longer face it, please, there is no point saving any property. Your life is key. Save your life, save anybody that you can save. 
you can regain properties later. Thank you. Oh, that is cool because at this point, it is clear to know that uh, what is critically important is you first, anyone else you can yes. save, and then if it is possible yes. to fight that fire, you do. But if not, um, you escape, leave it. Run from leave it for the professionals. Yeah, yeah, yes. leave it. Yes, exactly. Hope, hopefully, they will come. Um, another follow up to that is uh, what you hinted. Our fire service seems to be totally moribund. In those days, uh, if you watch um, uh, uh, the masquerade, Zebra will say that the fire service people, as soon as you call them, they will first drive to your to the fire spot and they remember that there's no water in the truck. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, that is a very terrible situation. That, uh, okay. I don't know what's your comment to that. Any <clears throat> comment you have that can help these people wake up because that doesn't look good at all in any sense. Mm. Well, um, you, you see, um, for me, there is something that has always kept me going. Um, as a security and safety professional, I do not need the motivation of any individual, any government for me to do my job professionally. I take it upon myself as a, as a duty. And the truth is, anybody in the safety and security uh, profession that sees themselves as professionals have to be ready at all times. There must be this passion to do your job to the very best. There must be this passion to upgrade your knowledge on your job to the very best. There must be this passion to serve humanity, whether it is whether you're being paid, whether you're motivated or not. So um, this issue of the fire service being in a comatose situation or being in a lackluster uh, situation or condition all the time, it cuts across almost every government sector. And that has actually creeped in, into the private sector. And who are we to blame? We cannot really blame the government. Because um, if we continue to pile everything on the government, uh, before you know it, we will lose our sense of responsibilities as individuals. So before we can begin to blame the government on a lot of things, the individual as a person, whether you are in the government, whether you are an individual on your own or you're working for a corporate organization, whatever you have been taxed to do, that's your job. That is your responsibility. Your failure cannot be blamed on anybody but on you. If you do not have resources to do your job or your responsibilities, there are usually, you know, chains of command, how to go about asking for these things or the resources or materials that will help you do these jobs. So for you to fail in your responsibility is not an excuse. So if the fire service, for example, fail to reach or come to a scene where there is a fire outbreak, early. We can't blame the government. We will blame the people who are responsible with that job, that duty of putting out these fires. And the same thing goes for every other government or private sector. The police, the, the military, the, just name it, the corporate organization, name them. It is the responsibility of everyone to do the needful at all times for the service of humanity, not for their pockets. Thank you. Oh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy I brought this angle to this question uh, because uh, this issue of personal responsibility is unbeatable for anything. And it's not just in security and safety, even in other aspects of life and business. Everyone needs to stand up for what they have signed for. And whatever name you put to yourself, exactly. one, a man needs to stand up for what he has accepted to do. Personal responsibility is key, exactly. and I'm glad you brought that angle and was able to, you know, explain it very well. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, now, there was this fire incident, this gas explosion that took place in um, in Barua at the Barua area of Ipaja Lagos, Ipaja Lagos, and uh, 
That was it happened on October 8, 2020. Now, one thing that was noticed uh, around this gas explosion was that very early in the morning, one gentleman stood by a road junction and stopped vehicles that would have normally pass through that gas plant and asked them to divert. And he spent a, a, a reasonable amount of time diverting vehicles so that no vehicle passes that spot at probably the wrong time when that explosion will go off. Okay, so what this means is that um, there are signs when they like a gas explosion, maybe in a gas plant, there are signs that one can notice ahead of time before a gas explosion can take place. Do you know any of these signs so that people can, you know, on seeing them, begin to do the needful, either escape, call attention to, to those who could fight it, or those who are responsible in changing uh, the situation? So are there signs that you know about which you can share with our viewers that can help okay. people say, hey, trouble is going to soon come here. The best thing is for me to run. The best thing is for me to call fire service or call someone. Any of those? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Francis. Yeah, um, the man you said was, um, you know, seen redirecting vehicles and uh, commuters. Um, yes, I must commend his effort. I think... Uh, he did a whole lot in doing that, and he saved a whole lot of lives. Um, and that was because he was able to identify a hazard condition. Now, I want to base my, my discourse on this very issue, on the gas explosion or the gas leak. Now, talking about gas leak, signs of gas leak, of course, we understand that gas go through pipes that are buried underneath the ground. And uh, the moment there is an escape of gas from the pipe, it is usually because a certain pipe is busted and there is a space for the gas to escape. Now, when that happens, that environment becomes an unhealthy environment because we're talking of gas. Now, the gas mixes up with the air that we are breathing, you and I. The gas has been contaminated, it has been defiled. So, number one, for your health purpose, for your safety purpose, it is unwise to even be around that area inhaling that gas because there are lots of negatives, lots of, lots of damage that can be done to your body when you put them into your system. That's one. Now, identifying signs. Of course, the gas leak is one. The smell around that area is quite, the smell of gas, the odor is quite different. You will really, really observe that something is not right around there. And when gas is escaping from a leaking pipe, there is usually a sound it must make because of the force at which it's escaping. That force gives you a sign or directs you to the direction where the noise is coming from. So if you are such an individual that knows that, oh, there are gas pipes that are buried around here, probably this can be or will be a gas leak. The only thing you do is to leave the area. And when you leave that area, you do not just leave that area. You call the relevant authorities. It doesn't cost you a thing to call one one. 112 or 767, you know, the Lagos State Emergency Numbers and explain yourself. And when you're making these calls, you don't make these calls close to where you suspect the gas leak is coming from. You stay very far away from that because your phone call can actually trigger the gas itself to explode if it has not exploded. And if you're a security person and you're having a radio, the handheld radio, the walkie-talkies, you do not also use it around there. The distance you give when using a, ref a phone is the same distance or even more that you use when you're using a handheld radio. So it is always important when you notice such, you just do what the gentleman did by ensuring that you di redirect people to other routes as against you know, the normal route that people should follow. You make them understand that that side is not safe so that you can save them 
save life, and of course, uh, not add more to the already bad economy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, exactly. Uh, th those are very candid and uh, wise uh, counsel on how we can handle these kind of situations. I don't know, one day a leakage, it will smell, there will be signs and there will be noise. And all of this should become mm. warning enough for people to begin to take precautions for their safety. Thank you very much. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Korea, during the rainy season last year, that is in 2020, there were several flooding cases around Nigeria and some African countries. In fact, Abuja had a very terrible one that people died. So, um, what safety and loss challenges do we face with flooding? And what can people do to stay safe and secure during rainy season and flooding situations? I expect that Nigeria has not changed much since last year with building and controlling of erosion. So, I expect that there will be erosion again this year. And then people might uh, face some challenges with the coming rainy season we expect next month. So, what can people do? What can people know? Thank you. Thank you, sir. You see, the issue of flooding in Nigeria is not new. Flooding in Nigeria has a history. And uh, in my line of business, in my safety and security business, and generally in life, it is important that we follow history because I follow history. Now, there are certain areas in Nigeria that are pro prone to flooding during rainy season. You see, every year, flooding comes, properties are lost, lives are lost, farmlands are eroded by water, and, you know, there is a negative effect on life and the society and the economy at large. You know, government will tell you, uh, People living in areas that usually get, get flooded every year, you relocate. But um, the unfortunate thing is that, um, you see, as far as I'm concerned, anywhere in the world that you are not comfortable staying, you've been staying there, your forefathers have been there for hundreds of years, and you realize you're not making it there. It doesn't cost you anything. Pack your baggages, pack everything you have, and leave. Resettle somewhere else while you still have the life and energy to do that. Now, when we talk of the flooding, you see the same area where you have flooded, affecting people, affecting properties, affecting crops last year, where people died, where properties got, you know, were destroyed. You go back there this year, people are still living there. You know, they have not forgotten what happened last year. They have not forgotten what happened 20 years ago. But for the fact that they feel that they are owners of that environment, maybe their heritage will be lost if they leave. They refuse living and they continue staying there and continue to make losses, huge losses until finally the worst happens. Um, for this year, I will advise and encourage that people who are living in flooding prone areas should even begin to leave those areas, even before the rainy season starts. Because um, as far as I'm concerned, individuals, organizations, the government cannot do anything about it. We should stop waiting on some abstract individuals or powers to come help us do certain things. No, when you look at issues, you realize that a trend has been occurring over the years and nothing has been done. And that trend is affecting you negatively. Please leave the trend, leave the environment, relocate, seek greener pastures, seek more safe environment to live your life, do your business. Now, having said that, um, I will also want to point out here that um, some of man's actions, some of our behaviors towards blocking drainages, 
you know, towards building on drainages are adding to a lot of this flooding. And uh, it is important because in this very case, it is the government that has a role to play. Uh, the government should begin to look out for, you know, or begin to bring out modalities that will stiffen penalties or bring up punitive measures, you know, for people who build and block drainages, you know. So if we are able to bring out these um, punitive measures and enforce it, follow it up to the latter, um, I think that um, flooding to some extent, the ones that are caused by man, because of course, there are two types of flooding, natural, the one that is natural that will cause, of course, uh, erosion and gullies and, you know, wiping away of uh, people's property and lives. Then there is another one that is man-made. The man-made kind of erosion can be controlled. Even in our cities, it can be controlled. All right, so let us as humans, as people who are reasonable, begin to do the needful because we are humans, we see with our eyes, we know what is happening. We should stop waiting for people to begin to tell us what we know we should do before we begin to do them. Thank you. Okay, and, and I think one, one of view I have is that um, the issue of, of about our own lifestyle and how it contributes to the problem of flooding and the danger um, and the the to our security and safety <laughs> is so much in our hands. You uh, you cannot be of this facade. We can keep saying that again and again that we need to change our lifestyle. We need to change. I live in places where sometimes when it is raining heavily, if you come out in that rain and look. You will see your neighbor bringing all see. their debris and pouring inside the garden. and dumping and inside the water, dumping inside that place. And I can't understand mm -hmm. how that is a, a, a waste disposal system. That is something that it you is not. block that drainage and then reverse okay. the whole of the water to come and attack the rest of the residents of that area. So I think our people need to remember what we have said today that their personal responsibility to keep their environment clear. So that water can find their cause. Um, is exactly. Critical. And then exactly. Uh, you are counseled that people should relocate from those places that even if it is ancestral land and then it's not paying you any dividend. Every year, whatever exactly. you do, you waste it through flooding. So why do you exactly. continue to waste your Why time? do you keep remaining there? Why? I mean, yeah, so that is critical. Okay, thank you. This has been going so well and I appreciate having you in this program. Now, the name Nigeria seems to have uh, acquired a new synonym <laughs> known as insecurity. <laughs> no one is safe again who lives or walks the roads of Nigeria, even those guarded by armed policemen and military. Because who have had the uh, kidnappers shoot their guards, their policemen, policemen and armed soldiers, and, and they kill those ones and they still kidnap them. Kidnapping, raping, and killing of victims, even after ransom has been paid, and home and community invasions by heavily armed Fulani Hesman terrorist group is in the news every day. Do you have an assessment of the security situation in Nigeria today and a general recommendation for individuals and families on how to stay safe and secure in these perilous times? <coughs> Um, Mr. Francis, thank you for asking this question. And uh, I must tell you, the issue of Nigeria, let me say Nigeria is a very big topic. Um, if we continue discussing Nigeria, we cannot exhaust it today. We cannot even exhaust it in one month uh, because of the level of loads. I will use the word loads, the challenges that um, we are all facing as Nigerians. Um, now, before I answer your questions, um, we as Nigerians or citizens, you realize that whatever problem that is bedeviling us has always been a factor of our inputs or outputs at some point or the other. 
um it is not just about the government it is not about you it's about every citizen mr francis i am sorry to tell you and i will say this and um the, the truth is i will also apologize to our viewers and listeners if uh, my comment is going to offend any one of them um the city charity begins at home do you know that Almost everybody in this country is a criminal. <laughs> Mr. Francis, answer me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say everybody. I said almost, almost. everybody in this yes. country is a criminal, meaning that you have a there point. could be exceptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, why I said this is this. Most times we blame the government. Government didn't do this. Government didn't do that. In our little spaces in the office, in our marketplaces, in our homes, do you realize that <clears throat> there's always this mentality of cheating the next person that comes your way? I don't know if that has come across you sometimes or you have experienced right. it. Yeah. A friend of mine will say, one of my Yoruba friends will say, Nigeria is a country of Jagba, you know, survival of the fittest. You will get power, collect them from the person that is weak. Seriously. You know, whether it belongs to you or that is the country we are in. And um, where the government has gotten it all wrong, the government has not been able to manage the situation because before it became, as a matter of fact, Nigeria is in crisis. I must tell you the truth. Security-wise, like you said, I will not substitute Nigeria for insecurity, but I will tell you <laughs> Um, Nigeria is in a dire need of salvation. Yes, in as much as I will not be a prophet of doom, because I believe that uh, we can still we can still remedy the situation. Um, the government uh, has lost it. I will use the government because they are the ones that are saddled with the responsibility of maintaining. You know, the good, the goodness of a nation, they are the rulers of the nation. It is whatever decision, policies they bring up that every other person follows. So if the policies are good, it works well for the masses. Crime rate reduces. But when the policies are not good, it doesn't work well for the nation. Crime rate increases. So at this juncture in our nation, this is where the problem is, and this is where we have found ourselves. Um, <clears throat> Nigeria can be redeemed. It is time that uh, all of us begin to put our hands on deck. We will keep talking. We keep advocating, you know, for patriotism as against uh, selfish interest, because that is the area that is also killing us. Patriotism as against selfish interest. We need to begin to practice these things, not just say them and not do them. <clears throat> For example, the government is telling everybody to wear your masks, wear your face masks, wear your this, wear your that, to ensure, you know, as preventive measures against COVID-19. But we have seen on many times, many occasions, where even government representatives who have been telling you, conversing for nose masks to wear it and all of that, or even for social distancing, they are not obeying what they are. They are not practicing what they have been preaching. So in situations like that, when they are not doing what they have asked you to do, you wouldn't want to do those things that have been asked of you to do, because whoever is enforcing it is not doing them. Are you with me, Mr. Francis? So yes, it yes, is important as, as, as Nigerians that uh, we remedy this nation. It is uh, correcting the situation. It's, uh, I would say it's not going to be easy because um, it has never been easy, you know, driving back a country from where we are now to where we want it to be. Countries that have done it in the past will always tell you it is not easy. Every citizenry has to put hands on deck. The professionals, the journalists, 
the government agencies, the market men and women, the students, everybody, we need to come together and uh, follow a single, a simple blueprint of how to move the country forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, as you share these thoughts, what clearly comes into my mind is the fact that um, the, the challenge is so monumental. Many people are losing hope. Even the government agencies cannot help themselves. And um, But you hit the nail where it is because personal responsibility is one issue that Nigerians have not taken seriously before. Many times we believe it's him, it's her, it's the other person who should be take, doing this or that, and therefore we miss the point. Okay, thank you for yes, sharing sir. those thoughts, and, and I'm sure it will help some of us know how to get away from the situation that we face today. Okay. So, um, you are well versed in uh, fiscal security also. So, uh, I want to find out if there are simple, basic, electronic, and fiscal security measures that families and corporate organizations can normally provide in their homes today. You know, simple ones. Sometimes these things are very expensive, but are there, you know, simple ones that do not cost so much that individuals should keep around them to help them stay safe, either on that, when they're under attack or even to prevent an attack? Hello, Mr. Francis, are you there? Yes. Yes. Did you get what Hello? I said? Yes. No, you were actually breaking at the time. I didn't get all of your questions. Okay. I was asking uh, if there are basic... Are you able to hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear okay. you now. Yes. I'm asking for basic, simple, maybe not so expensive, electronic and fiscal security measures that individuals can put in their homes to either help them prevent uh, security problems or even help them respond when such a problem comes upon them? Um, uh, Mr. Francis, if I get you correctly, because you still got, uh, you weren't very smooth in your oh, question okay. there because of the network you are breaking. But if I can get you correctly, you were making mention of uh, uh, security measures that one can put in the home, you know, for basic uh, security and safety preventive measures. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, security and safety um, doesn't come cheap. It has never come easy now that um, there are glo global trends in safety and security. It doesn't come cheap. It has actually, as a matter of fact, gone on a high in terms of uh, acquiring and even maintenance. Um, first of all, I will, uh, yes, there are measures. Let me start with the physical, uh, the physical measures uh, you put in place. Thank God. Majority of the our our homes, our buildings in Nigeria have got fences, and fence is one physical measure that you can put. It is true there are homes that do not have uh, fences, but uh, that notwithstanding, beside the fences and the gates, uh, um, another thing that can be employed for safety and security. <clears throat> is professional security guards. When I mention, when I talk about professional security guards, I am not talking of me guards. A professional security guard is different from a me guard in the sense that a professional security guard, uh, guard uh, can read and write. They are able to communicate properly. They have been trained to communicate properly with people, they are also trained to identify hazards, to analyze risk. They are trained on how to make proper reporting. They are trained on how to make proper documentation. 
they have trained on how to do a lot of things that the ordinary may guard, whose duty is just opening and closing, uh, will do. Sometimes the Megad can even leave their gate and go wash cars, buy things, go buy fuel, go do a lot of things, go to the market. These are things that professional security officers do not do. So employing a professional security officer to mount your gate, to mount your compound, is one other aspect that I will encourage under physical security measures. And it doesn't come easy because you have to pay them on a uh, uh, monthly basis. Um, now, when we go to the electronic, we're looking at, um, you know, CCTVs, installation of CCTVs, maybe four within your maybe four corners of your company. We are also looking at uh, smoke detectors. We are also looking at, uh, you know, uh, intruders and alarm within the compound. And of course, it will give you a head start when there is an intruder to alert you. Uh, we are also looking at, uh, of course, the various kinds of uh, you see, suppression systems can be in your kitchen. It's another fire firefighting equipment that suppresses fire when there is an outbreak in the kitchen. You know, these are some, but not limited to all of this, but these are some of the things that one can actually have in the compound. These are some of the Um, it seems, uh, uh Mr. Okorie's, uh, internet. To give you some. It seems Mr. Okorie's internet is have is stiffening up there. Um, hopefully he will be able to reconnect as we tidy up, uh, this interview today, but when we can take note of the things he has already said about the basic security measures we can put in place um, in case we, uh, as we begin to set up our homes. Okay. Um, and then we've lost him momentarily. Hopefully he will come back. While we wait for him, let's take a commercial break. Uh, hopefully, Mr. Correa will be able to rejoin us at the end of that. When he does, we will continue Hello, with the rest everyone. of We would like to introduce you to Graceworth Nigeria Limited. Graceworth Nigeria Limited is a Nigerian-owned and operated company using Season, an accomplished professional to execute complex security missions in conjunction with the host government to mitigate risk on behalf of our clients. Our team members have decades of experience in the security sector bringing a wealth of knowledge and experience that not all security companies are able to offer. The success of the company is based on our unrivaled ability to build and maintain successful partnerships with our customers to provide professional and reliable security services. We pride ourselves on providing highly trained personnel experienced in dealing with the most complex of security issues. Since our formation, we have gained a reputation as a highly experienced company with a young, energetic and forward-thinking management team, offering the highest level of professionalism. We offer the following services. 1. Security awareness and training. 2. Program support and consultancy. 3. Risk assessment and investigations. 4. Executive protection and travel management. You can contact us on plus 234-807-227-2799 or 0702-525-4858 or visit our office at 14 Buchanan Crescent, off Amanu Kano Crescent, was 2, Abuya, Nigeria. We would be glad to have you. Graceworth, leave your worries with us. Uh, thank you very much. And um, uh, Mr. Courier, welcome back. We are glad to have you back. <coughs> Uh, thank you. you have thank some you. points you want to cap up with the last question before we move to the other things? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm done. Okay. We can okay. move on. Okay. Thank you. So, um, here's uh, the, the, the general knowledge we have with security is that 
there's no foolproof security system. Usually all the security and safety measures we have in place, uh, what they do is to delay, dictate, and deter. Um, in the event that security measures only dictated and delayed their assailants, and they didn't deter them, uh, what attitudes and measures can individuals and families have and take to be able to survive an attack going from why the assailants were still trying to get an entrance into the place and then when they have finally assailed the victims. So we are looking for attitudes and measures before they reach the victims, when they have now reached the victims. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Um, um, I think um, one is uh, going by what we have discussed earlier concerning um, fiscal measures and electronic measures to put in the house uh, to aid, you know, to encourage, to increase the level of safety and security of individuals. We will also understand that uh, before we begin to put all of these things, I must add, it is important that um, whoever want to install or put some of these things in place should consult widely with professionals, safety and security professionals. Now, safety and security professionals uh, have the knowledge, the expertise in preferring the best solutions, as in the best measures that are suitable for each homes. Of course, bearing in mind what is to be protected, bearing in mind the crime history within that environment. So when the professional looked at, looks at all of this, the professional is able to prefer countermeasures or measures that can stand the test of time, that can stand the test of any force. Now, if you are such that a, a person that lives within a home where you do not have uh, policemen, you don't have armed men or security guards that are manning or watching over you and your family while you are away or while you are in the house, you're sleeping at night. Uh, you happen to be somebody like me, you know, an ordinary citizen like myself that lives with other neighbors in the compound. We watch out for each other. If you happen to be someone like me that has a uh, you know, you have your your door, your, your door, it could be wooden door, it could be iron, you have a burglary proof. Yes, you have burglaries on your windows, at your windows and at the doors. Um, you need to, one, know the level of impact those things you have in place can take before they're given. In case you are under attack and uh, it's not giving them the direct access to your family. We should also consider the fact that criminals that want to come and attack you, they would have first looked at your, they would have first looked at your security setting. They would have studied, done their due diligence and underground study of the target they want to attack. So the moment they realize that, yes, we can do it, the target is an easy target. Even with the burglary proof, uh, we can use our legs, we can push it, we can do this, we can do that. And they agree, or they decide to come and attack you. They are also bearing in mind, they are fully ready, and they are well prepared. Because when they are coming and they are banging on your doors, banging at the door, hitting and hitting, of course. They will be making a whole lot of noise, which, of course, we are not neighbors. They are prepared. They have come for you. So when you notice situations like that, and you realize that, oh, with the level at which these people are going, they will eventually gain access into 
your house into your home. Please, it is important. You surrender when they eventually gain access. Because at that point in time when they are trying to gain access into your home, it is either you're trying to make phone calls to call people if there are no exits, if there are no escape routes for you and your family members. Because the way Nigerian houses are built, most of the houses only have one door in, just one door in one door. No escape routes, nothing. So if you are stuck inside the house, inside the apartment, you cannot escape. It is important, please, you succumb totally to them when they have eventually gained access to your home. Now, if you have a family where there are females, you know, during the night you have women that wear all sort of things to sleep and you are having this attack, please, for the women to avoid rape, it is important that you quickly change back into clothes that would not portray you as attractive. You change into clothes that are smelling. I am giving you these tips because I know they work. From the testimonies of certain individuals, it has worked and it will continue to work. Now, why I'm saying this is this. When criminals come into your house, for example, the primary mindset is to steal whatever valuables you have. Now, while they are doing that on a second thought, they might decide to rape, which was not initially within their plans. And why would they do that? It is when they begin to see invitations, when they begin to see the physical futures of the opposite sex, and it looks attractive, smells good, they will be tempted to go ahead and do that rape, which for me, is the end of story. That can never be recovered. Your money, your phones, your cars that have been stolen can be recovered, but not that one. So this is why I am advising. If possible, wear smelly clothes, clothes that you have not washed for weeks. Let them smell very horribly. I tell you, the criminals will steal your money or do take the money or the property they want to take and they will leave you alone. Do not drag with them. Whatever they want to take, it is important you obey them. And the moment they gain access to your apartment, everyone in the house should lie down flat, facing the floor, not looking at anybody's face. They will not want you to look at their face. Please do not look at their face. Lie down flat and do not panic. Lie down flat. Do not panic. If you are asked questions, respond truthfully. Do not lie about it because they might know the truth. And when they realize you're lying, it gets them angry and they might be forced to do anything. So these are some of the tips that I have. And um, I, I always um, advise my friends, friends with families, wife and kids, as much as we pray as Christians or as Muslims, for these things not happening, these things eventually happen. You never can tell if it's actually going to happen to you or not. But when we daily educate our family members on these things, in case this happens, this is what is expected of everybody. This is your rule. This is your rule. This is your rule. They are pre-informed. They are prepared. When it happens, it will not come to them as a surprise because you have been talking about it. You have been educating them on what to do before that time. And the moment it happens, of course, there's always going to be this two, three minutes of fright. But afterwards, everybody regains their self-consciousness and begin to do what is needful. Thank you. Thank you very much. That That is very awesome. And I think we need to know that um, at least if you have space between the arrival the, the counsel you gave is very important. The women in the house need to dress, change their dressing from nightgowns into something tougher 
and uh, you you have carried, added one that I didn't know about. If you can make that clue to smell horrible, that will be some distemper, which is uh, very useful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, Thank so you. let's uh, wrap up this great meeting. I, I I I feel so good to have this meeting with you today. You have shared a lot of wise things. Are there some final you. thoughts you would like to add to uh, our listeners, which they can go away with? Well, uh, without uh, much ado, I think that um, it is important that uh, our listeners um, recap on all of these discussions and uh, follow every, you know, every discussion the advices, what we have discussed here, begin to practice them because um, it is important too. Uh, number two, uh, if organizations, there are organizations that are, that are just interested in making money. They don't bother how the money comes. There are no basic foundations or standards on training and retraining of their staffs. Um, for such organizations, it is very, very important they begin to key into training and retraining of their staffs. Um, by so doing, it gives their staffs this needed knowledge, which they can actually take home, apart from utilizing it, exhibiting it, you know, in their offices or in their workplaces, they can take home and impact people. And uh, talking about Nigeria as a whole, um, we are all Nigerians, and uh, the ball is in our court. To tell you the truth, um, there is no individual that has a greater part to play than all of us. We are all equal in this race to making Nigeria, uh, to taking Nigeria to the level where we want the Nigerian nation to be. Um, it is not all about the government, but rather it is about everybody in Nigeria. Let us begin to take responsibilities and stop passing the ball. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, viewers, you have been watching personal and family uh, security and safety program on the African Town Hall Online Television with Mr. Richard Okorie a loss prevention supervisor with uh, four points by Sheraton, Victoria Land, Lagos. Um, uh, this program is brought to you by Secure Travel and Resident Services Limited. We have been so well fed today with a lot of information that I think will help each and every one of us to stay safe. Um, until we come your way again, we invite you to join us to express gratitude to Mr. Richard Okorie for his wealth of experience which he has freely shared with us today. And then we invite you to visit our YouTube channel, the Afghan Town Hall. And while there, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Richard, thank you very much for being with us and for sharing from your wealth of experience. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Eh? Okay. I'm open tomorrow for invitations anytime. Please. I, I wanted to say exactly you. that, that you should stay available because uh, the other programs we are planning to do, which we would like security professionals to actually come out and give of the experience. Thank mm. you very much for the opportunity to be it's with you. I right. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank okay, you. So thank you. you. Thank you. You have a great day now. Okay. And you too.